Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad that you've chosen to worship with us as we celebrate the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Our contemporary worship, one of our six weekly services, will begin in a few moments. Thank you. 
Amen. Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. Welcome, one and all, to worship here at Our Saviors, not only to those who are here, guests and visitors especially, but also to those who join us by way of television this morning. And, of course, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. May God bless. Yes, go ahead. Wish them happy Father's Day. We'll just soak it up. May God bless all of you as you serve your families and God through this vocation of fatherhood. Worship continues as God invites us to come before him in all honesty and confess our sins and receive that gift of forgiveness that God has prepared. So let us pray. God of infinite mercy, when we neglect the humbleness of knowing our place in this world, forgive us. When we trade your peace and calls for unity for conflict and violence, forgive us. When we forsake our good character to join those who scoff at your ways, forgive us. When we ignore your truth and turn away from your wisdom, forgive us. Forgive us and heal us, Lord, that we may become the righteousness of God and abide in your grace and love forever. Amen. People of God, hear the good news this day. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And all of this is from God, whose promise comes to you in this very moment through Christ Jesus our Lord. Your sins are forgiven they are no longer counted against you. And so we proclaim, thanks be to God. At this time, I invite those who are planning to leave just in a few moments to go to Duluth on their mission trip to come forward, please, for your commissioning and sending. Come on down. You might have noticed them on your way in today. They're a little bit obvious wearing those black shirts. And they are eager and ready to go. Just come on down, take your place here across the front. And you can face me at this time. And then when I have you turn around, each of you can give your little speech that you've prepared. <laughs> My dear friends, it is intentional that we have asked you to participate this morning in the confession and forgiveness before we send you on your way because this is the posture that you will assume when you serve. It recognizes that you are only able to serve your neighbor because you yourself have been served through the selfless love of Jesus Christ, the one who forgives your sins. So hear this reading from Mark. Jesus said, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you, you must be, your, must, be, must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many." got a few, a few questions for you before you leave. Will you accept this commission to serve and carry it out in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? If so, say together, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. Will you work hard to act as examples and servants of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. Will you be compassionate, patient, forgiving, and loving to the people among whom you will live and work? If so, say together, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. I'd like you to turn and face the congregation. And you who are gathered here this morning have a, a role in all of this commissioning business as well. I have a question for you, people of God. 
Will you support these messengers of Jesus Christ sent by God to serve God's people with the gospel of hope and grace? Will you pray for them this week, help and honor them for their work's sake, and in all things strive to live in peace and unity in Christ? If so, say convincingly, we will. All right, then, let's pray. And you may extend your hand in blessing over these who are prepared to leave in just a few moments. Gracious God, you have called this group to a special ministry. Bless them as they travel to Duluth today. Give them a safe journey. Be with them as they build relationships with each other and with you, God. And we ask your blessings on the YouthWorks staff who will be leading them. Strengthen this group with your Holy Spirit and bless them that through their work, your love and grace might be shared. And all of God's people said, amen. Well, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Go in God's love and grace, you guys, and work hard. Let's stand and share God's peace. The Vacation Bible School kids can come on down and get ready to sing. Again, the VBS kids can come down and get ready to sing. Some of you, or maybe many of you, have been aware that we've had Vacation Bible School this last week, and we've got some kids here this morning who were here all week long, and they are ready to share a couple of songs with you from their week, learning all about Joseph, and leading them is Jackie Payne.
I want you to stay right here because Kid Talk is coming right up. But first, let's pray, shall we? Gracious God, your promise of life comes to us each day, filling us with hope for this life and the next. May we share the hope we have been given with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, kids, you can be seated. If there are other kids out in the audience, come on up for a kid talk. Come on up for a kid talk. I'm going to need some help today. I need actually six of you to uh, maybe stand up here behind everyone else. Excuse me. I need six of you. Jump right up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, here you are, number one. <laughs> I want you to hold this like that until I tell you to turn it around. Don't show anybody what's on the other side, okay, until I say. Number two, over here. Ava, come on. Right there. Don't show anybody. Number three, let's go. We got things to do, people. This isn't going to work unless I've got six volunteers. I'm going to call on Pastor Tim pretty quick. <laughs> Come on, Tim, you can help me out. Who else? There we go. One more over here. And the last one. Don't show anybody what's on your cart. Thank you very much. You're so shy this morning. Thursday when I saw you singing, you had oodles of energy. Sunday morning is a little bit different, isn't it? It feels just different. Well, today... I needed help because I want to talk about a mystery person, and I want to see if you'll be able to figure out who I'm talking about, and I think that you probably will before I finish all of my clues, but keep it to yourself until everything has been revealed, okay? So with all of your energy, I want to hear you say, give me an F. Give me an F. <laughs> Let's try that again. When I say give me an F, you say F as loud as you can. Ready? Give me an F. Oh, we'll get there. Now you can turn your card around. Just you. There's the F. F stands for forgiving. This person that I'm talking about is willing to forgive you even when you disobey them. Pretty cool. Give me an A. 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 A is for attention. This person pays attention to you. When you have something to say or when you need to talk, they will pay attention to you. Give me a T. You're getting better. I feel it. T is for teacher. This person teaches us all the important things in this life, right from wrong, all of those things. Give me an H. Hey, great job. H is for helpful. This person helps us make important decisions. They're very wise, usually. Give me an E. e. Nice job. Now, next one, we're going to have everyone else help us out. E is for empathetic. Can you say that word? <laughs> it sort of sounded like impaschetti. Let's try it again. Empathetic. Do you know what that means? Neither do I, so we're stuck. <laughs> what it means is that when you feel sad, this person also feels sad. When you feel happy, this person also feels happy. They feel what you feel. And finally, everybody, give me an R. R. Woohoo! R is for really special. You've only got one of these in the whole wide world. Who is it? Your father, your dad. What day is today? Day. I'm so glad you didn't say Sunday. Thanks for helping me out. <laughs> Father's Day, yes. Now, I realize that some of you may not have a father that lives with you in your house, but I can tell you this much. You do have a heavenly father who will be all of those things that I told you about and then some for you 24-7, every single day of your life. You can count on that. And I, I, for that, you can be thankful. So on this Father's Day, would you pray with me an echo prayer? Simply repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for our dads. Help us to show our love for them. And may we always remember to thank you, 
our Heavenly Father. And all of God's children said together, Amen. Thanks for coming up today, you guys. You can find your way back to your seats. We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music and in prayer. Listen for God's voice in this reading, found in 2 Corinthians. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slightly momentary aff affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, if indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to further be clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by this life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a, gar as a guarantee. So we are always confident even though we know that while we are at home in this body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, to God. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of mercy and promise, you give us hope in a future together with you in your kingdom where the trials and the struggles of this world will be no more. Until that day, help us to know that you are here with us too in this world with us, giving us that same promise of hope to live in each day. Thank you for your gift that is life. Amen. Well, today we are going to continue this walk that we've been doing through the book of Corinthians as we talk about some of the things that Paul was saying to that early church. And today we're going to talk a little bit about two worlds, heaven and earth. But before we do, I don't want to be left out of this celebration. I, I too want to wish all the dads out there Happy Father's Day. You know, along with the kids, Pastor Randy and everybody here, we just want to say how uh, grateful we are for all of you dads. And I hope you get a little extra special treatment today as the day goes on that your loved ones will show you in their own way just how much you mean to them. It is a gift to be a dad. I'm one myself. And it's a big responsibility too. And today is our day to say thanks to all of you. When I think about Father's Day, I think about how grateful I am for my two wonderful kids. I really love them a lot. And it's a big responsibility being a dad. I've never taken it lightly. Dads have to be so many different things. Provider, teacher, nurturer, comforter, protector, the list goes on and on. And about the time we figure out how to do all these things just right, when our kids are growing up and it's kind of a little too late, they're off on their own. And we wish we could turn back that clock a little bit and do the things that we should have done the right way the first time again, but we can't turn back the clock. Time marches on. Before too long, we begin to realize just how human we dads really are. If we are so blessed when we are little children, 
Our dads can seem larger than life, strong, invincible, wise, and sometimes we dads even believe all this stuff ourselves. But as we get older, well, some strange things begin to happen. We begin to realize that, well, maybe we aren't as big and tough as we used to be. And we start to forget more things than we remember. And some of us even get bald heads and gray beards as time goes on. It's hard for us as dads to face the fact that, that we're not supermen, although we never really were. When we begin to wear out, our confidence begins to wane. And, well, that's, I think, when we need to be reminded that we are loved not because we're perfect or super strong or super smart or, or all those things that we think that we need to be. We're loved just simply because we're dad. And maybe that's why we need days like Father's Day to remind us that love is something that's stronger than anything any of us could ever say or do. Love is a gift from God that reminds us of a far greater truth. There is a strength that dwells within each one of us, men and women, a strength from within that is eternal and true and our hope. That's, I think, what Paul is getting about, getting at today in his letter to the Corinthians. He was reminding them of where true strength really does come from. The strength that they longed for was a strength that came from within. More often than we care to admit, we are all reminded of just how human and frail we are. And, and we get discouraged when we, when we do and sometimes maybe even afraid. But Paul is reminding us today of what lives inside us, or more appropriately, who lives inside us that gives us that strength and hope we need to live each day of our life in this world in confidence and in courage. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. These are great words from a powerful man of God, Paul. You know, when we think about Paul and we think about all the things that he did for the early church, all the things that he wrote in the Scriptures, we see a person that's almost larger than life. Paul, the superhuman apostle of God. But to be truthful, Paul was just like you and me. And as he did the work of God powerfully, he did so with all of his faults and all of his weaknesses and all of his questions. Paul didn't have an easy go at it. No, Paul was persecuted and beaten in prison and shipwrecked and in the end even killed for his preaching the message of Jesus Christ. But Paul was strong indeed. And his strength was something that carried him through all these things that, seeked, that sought to bring him down each day. Oh, there were many times in this powerful man's life when he was discouraged, when he was hurting, when he was hungering, and yes, maybe even when he was afraid. And I'm sure there were many days in Paul's life when he felt very human indeed and weak, just like we sometimes do just like the early church sometimes did. We all have those times in life when things seek to tear us down. And I believe that's why Paul wrote this letter of encouragement to the early church in Corinth, to encourage them and, and maybe even himself, that in spite of all the things in this world to seek to take our hope away, we have a hope within us that promises us a victory a hope that says the trials and the struggles of this world can never take 
God's promise from us. Hope not only in the end, but hope for us to remember and to give thanks for in this life too. We are a people of hope. And we have hope no matter where we are. No matter where we are. And as I said at the beginning of this message, this is a message of heaven and earth. And how God walks with us in each place. Oh, we have our questions. We have our questions like, how can we find hope in a world that's so dark and cold? How can we find hope in our own lives when it seems like we're all on a race to see who can wear out the fastest? How can we feel this hope that Paul speaks of when we finally realize that we're not supermen or superwomen? Oh, heaven sounds wonderful. And we know that it's our home someday. But what about now, today? Where do we find our hope in a world that constantly seems to be trying to take it away? Well, like I said earlier, sometimes we forget things. It seems as if the Corinthians were forgetting some very key things about what it is they profess to believe. Maybe we're guilty of doing the same thing from time to time. And what are those key things? that Paul is reminding us today. Well, for one thing, the underlying message of 2 Corinthians and all of Paul's teachings for that matter is his unfailing belief in God's power to overcome the darkness and the sins of this world. Through the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has overcome all these things and God has brought hope to this world and God has given a promise to each of us that no matter what hardship we face, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is a promise that lives within us, a promise that we are to remember each and every day. God has already defeated all of these things that seek to tear us down through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And that same God has promised us victory too and will raise us just like he rose, he rose Jesus. This is the promise of heaven for you someday. When the trials and the tribulations of this world are no more and the pain is gone, even though it's real today, these things cannot take away the truth of God's love that lives with inside us. We cannot lose a battle that has already been won for us. Oh, yes, our earthly tents are always before us. and They're wearing out. There's holes in them. There's little leaks. But God is constantly at work in each one of us, creating a new thing that will last for an eternity. Amidst the real hardships and sufferings and questions that Paul had, Paul expressed a hope in God's work to redeem and to transform him and the church and the world. The threats of hardship would be enough to drive most people away, but Paul would stop at nothing to be the bearer of God's good news to the world. He knows that God who is at work in his mortal body is the same God who resurrected Jesus from the dead, and in this truth, Paul places his unwavering hope, and he encourages the Corinthians and the Christians of every time and place to do the same thing. You are to remember each day to claim that hope from God in your own lives and to remember that that hope lives within you. There's a power much greater than your weakness. 
that Jesus calls us to claim as we remember that prayer that he taught us and those, those words over and over again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, here on earth now, as it is in heaven. Jesus' command to us to remember, to remember this gift. Oh yes, we have a promise and a hope in heaven someday, but it is a hope that resides with us here too in these earthly tents of ours. In our baptism, God gave us a guarantee of eternal life through the Holy Spirit who has already made your body this temple. And like we were reminded earlier in this book of Corinthians, but we have these treasures in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. Do we see God in each other each day? Oh, no, we can't see heaven yet. But can we see God's love at work in each other, within each one of us in our world today? We can see that promise. We can see God's love in each one of us that left the glories of heaven to walk this world, to share these earthly tents together with us so that someday... We might live not in a tent, but in a house, in a building, not made of hands, that is eternal in the heavens. He who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Until we reach that day when we stand in the glories of heaven, we walk in this world by faith and hope. And we walk in the power of God's love. Heaven and earth. Two very different places where God has chosen to live with us. One is temporary. One is eternal. But in each of them, God with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. I had a very wise grandmother with very little education, only up to sixth grade, Idine Abrahamson, my grandma. She passed away a while ago, but she had a lot of little nuggets. She said to me a long time ago, be careful how you live. You might be the only Bible some people are reading. And uh, I, that stuck with me. And uh, as we go out into the world, we're going to see all kinds of issues and bad things that can get us down. Hopefully we can stay up and remember to walk in faith and not by sight. It is possible to keep that in, in heart. Just close our eyes to the world and open our eyes to God. Like this song says, walk by faith. Two.
I invite you to stand as you are able. As we walk by faith, let us confess together with all believers everywhere what it is that we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue worship with the giving of our offerings and the singing of a song. Kids, you can come and help with the noisy offering. That's one noisy offering, Gene. Once again, I invite you to stand as you're able. As we walk by faith rather than sight, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray for the church. Keep it faithful to and confident in you so that your people here walk by faith and proclaim how much you have done for all in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations, God. Work in and through governments, humanitarian organizations, and local partnerships to cast out the forces of evil 
and establish your life and peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Be with those who know demons of any kind and clothe them with Christ's freedom and healing. We name before you today those who have been hospitalized. Delmer Hubner, David Johnson, Margaret Wegner, Richard Hansen, Lavon Schrader, Judy Johnson, Susan Jordahl, and Grace Vanderwall. We also name those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially Margaret Novak and family on the death of her brother, and Pastor Jared and Jesse Rockness and family on the death of Jared's uncle. And we pray for those suffering from tragedy, violence, or injustice, especially those whose lives have been forever changed by the recent mass shooting in Orlando. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation, God. Establish and renew our faith. Strengthen our ministries and provide what we need to do, what you call us to do. Bless the middle schoolers and their adult guides who will serve this week in Duluth. Grant them safety, growth in faith, and a deeper love for you and for all humanity. Lord, in your mercy. Bless fathers and all who provide fatherly care in their vocation to raise up our children in love. And we pray for those recently married, especially Patricia Boa and Alex Tona. Bless them with your eternal love and grant them fullness of life as husband and wife. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, one way God answers our prayers is through Jesus, who comes to us with grace and mercy for all through this simple meal, in which we remember that it was on the night when our Lord Jesus was betrayed by his own friends that he took bread from the table and he gave thanks for it. And then he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then it was after supper that he took the cup. He gave thanks for it, and then he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup, it's the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The feast has been prepared just for you. Come and receive the gifts of God.
Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Savior's, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. But until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.